Hi, everyone. Welcome again to another financial analysis video with myself, Moe Damin, and Ted Wayman. So today we're going to be looking at Persimmon. Now, the purpose of these uh, the videos in this show is to help you improve your business acumen. And we do that by helping you become more financially savvy. And the main lever of how we do that is to help you read financial statements. As Warren Buffett says, if you want to, if you want to understand business, then you need to need to read. So you need to learn how to understand the language of business, and that language is finance. So we're going to be looking at the full year audited annual accounts to help you analyze and read future statements of this company, any company's industry, or any company at all, in a much better way. So you can do so more quickly and more confidently. So um, when we're looking at Persimmon, a couple of interesting notes about Persimmon. So first thing is they are a UK um, house builder or home builder, uh, and they're quite a well-known one. In fact, they are the second largest by revenue uh, in the UK. Uh, Barrett, uh, Barrett Homes or Barrett Developments is the, the largest. Now, one thing to note about Persimmon, um, if you're interested in this company, whether you're selling to this company or thinking about investing in them, um, it's important to note that uh, one of the things that's known about Persimmon is the quality of its homes that they build. Um, and unfortunately, that is not a, it's not a good reputation. In fact, um, the uh, Home Builders Federation in 2019 rated them the lowest quality of all the home builders in the UK. Now, obviously, they would have made steps to um, overcome that, but it's worth noting that. We're not going to go into that in detail. We're only interested in finances, but I share that with you uh, because it's an interesting piece of information and good context for you. Now, this uh, this company did come in as a request from one of our viewers. And in fact, 98% of the companies we analyze are requests. And you can do the same as well. All you have to do is just leave a note in the comments section as uh, Manoj did. Now, Manoj did the right thing, which is to give us more context. The more context you give us, the higher likelihood you're going to be um, moved up the priority list. In fact, his context was so good that within 16 hours, we decided this was a company we, we would like to analyze for him. So um, he, he puts in a lot of information there around uh, the CAGA, the, um, the uh, balance sheets, the current ratio, debt to equity ratio, et cetera. We're going to cover and highlight all of those things in this video. Um, and so thank you, Manoj, for, for the request and for the detailed um, context there. A couple of notes on the share price and stick around to the end because we're going to look at that share price in a bit more detail and certainly in terms of the context of what we've uncovered about the finances of the business. Now, this company, just like all the most of the companies in this industry, um, they've been taking quite a bit of a hit over the last couple of years. Um, so if you'd invested when they floated in 1988, you'd be sitting on a profit of around 777 percent if you invested five years ago you'd be down 56 percent if you invested a year ago you'd be down 52 percent so they have taken quite a bit of a hit they're not the only ones in their industry i think the whole industry has been down but it's worth noting that as part of the context so stick around to the end we're going to cover that in more detail so why don't we dive in now ted and uh, show our viewers and listeners how you can analyze the financials of a company like this and any other company in the industry Absolutely. Um, so good to see you, Moeed, and welcome back to all of our subscribers. Uh, if you are not a subscriber, welcome. Please, please, please do become a subscriber. Just click on the subscribe button, which is, you know, where the subscribe button is. And don't forget to like and share this um, video as well. Um, uh, and do leave your comments. So uh, Moeed made a, a very um, a, a punchy comment about the quality of their housing. Maybe you agree with him, maybe you disagree with him. Of course, that is, of course, uh, Moeed's uh, opinion, not necessarily the fact, uh, although he did cite a, an interesting independent report that supports his opinion. Um, but we like to express our opinions here. Your opinions may dis, uh, differ to us. Um, and if they do, please, please, please do leave a comment um, in the comment section. But please always, always be polite. Being polite is free. It doesn't cost anything to be polite. Um, okay, so here we are. Here is the um, uh, annual report and accounts. Um, as Moeed mentioned, uh, there is a half year statement uh, available, but we're going to look at the audited annual report and accounts for the year ended 2021. Uh, and 
uh, we're going to dive into the numbers. So we are on page 142 of 186 of this document. Uh, and all the pages that go before tell you who they are and what they do in the corporate governance and, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so uh, sales, uh, revenue uh, is up. Uh, so there's the top line, the sales. Uh, we're in uh, uh, millions of pounds. So three uh, 3,000 million, which is 3.6 billion pounds. So 3.6 billion pounds in revenue about an 8% growth. Um, uh, and uh, 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 Manoj was mentioning a compound annual growth rate, CAGR. Um, just for those of you who are not sure what his uh, uh, mnemonics mean, CAGR, compound annual growth rate of uh, 8%. So it looks like these guys are continuing to grow. So this is the cost of the um, uh, of the houses that they are selling. Um, and so that's the, what they sell them for. And then the cost of the houses, um, this is the cost of sales, 2.5 billion. That leaves them with quite a healthy gross profit. So this gross profit, this is a 30% margin. So if you spend £100,000 on one of their houses, it probably costs them about 70000 in order to build that house. So that sounds to me like a reasonably you know, profitable margin, um, uh, which is good, good for the company. We've then got the cost of running the business. So these are the um, costs of running the business, relatively small. You don't need a huge amount of overhead. So most of the, the costs for this business will be in the actual construction um, uh, of their assets, um, uh, of those buildings, um, uh, and a little bit of kind of back office marketing sales, um, et cetera, et cetera. All those marketing suites you see uh, on, their, on their kind of, um, uh, uh, you know, in, in their new buildings and, uh, you know, those, those costs will be in there. Um, finance costs, very, very low indeed. So very low financing, suggesting that they've got really, I mean, you know, probably no debt at all or next to no debt. A little bit of financed income. So they've probably got some cash in the bank. Um, uh, and then they are paying um, uh, they are paying some tax here. And so if we then just scroll down a little bit, we'll be able to see the profit, bottom line profit, 787 million. So that is quite a high profit margin. 3.6 billion of sales, 708, 787 million of profit is a 22% bottom line margin. 22 percent so that sounds uh, you know and that's similar to the previous year 19 percent in the previous year 22 percent in this year so these guys are profitable okay so looking pretty healthy from a shareholder's perspective maybe not a, uh, a, a homeowner's perspective um looking at their balance sheet um these guys interestingly the non-current assets actually relatively small they don't have a lot of non-current assets they've got some of these intangible assets there's probably goodwill in there maybe a little bit of software so they may have bought other um uh, 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 uh house builders for example but you don't actually need a lot of assets to be a house builder um what we don't see here is is whether they own land or whether the land they own is sitting in here um so you know a little bit of sort of um you know a, a sort of question mark around there so if they are owning the land we can have, have a look so we can very quickly just go and have a look at 17 uh, for example and note 17 um will tell us a little bit about um uh you know the, the detail behind those numbers so if we whiz down to 17 in fact on the way down to 17 we'll just stop off at uh, 13 which is our intangible assets into tangible assets the biggest number is goodwill which means that these guys have been growing by or, or some of their growth has come through acquisition of uh, 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 other um uh, other companies um but we're looking at 17 um, at the inventory. That's a fairly big number. Um, uh, and you can see here we've got land with carrying value um, was used for um, uh, securities for land payables, for example. So um, these guys, you know, they are holding uh, some land in their um, uh, in their inventory as well as, you know, they're going to have um, uh, 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 assets in construction, for example, so houses in construction um, uh, and a few raw materials, mainly be assets in construction um, and then also the, um, the, finished, um, the finished goods, which are up for sale. So uh, there's our current assets. So very, very big on the current assets. Um, uh, there's the, uh, the current assets, 4.3 billion, which is mainly the houses which are for sale, plus some land. Um, their current liabilities are pretty small so that's just the suppliers who they've got to pay um so you know even uh, they've got enough cash 
to pay the supply. So looking a really strong balance sheet. And when we look at the, um, uh, the non-current liabilities, there's, there's no debt at all. What we do see is this trade and other payables. Uh, not sure how they end up with um, uh, trade and other payables of um, uh, you know over a year. People who have said that they'll take payment o you know in, in more than a year's time, um, but that is effectively um, uh, that. And even so, they still got enough cash to be able to pay these guys. So I agree. This is looking a pretty healthy balance sheet. There's no debt. Um, the liquidity ratio is very very high, um, and uh, you know they they you know it looks like they're managing. Um, their accounts payable um, uh, uh, pretty strongly. Um, so looking at the uh, the movement in equity, here's the movement in equity. We are interested in the retained earnings section here. You'll notice that they paid a dividend last year. They've paid a dividend this year. So these guys are uh, their dividend um, significantly up. So these guys are pretty strong dividend players. If you like a little bit of income uh, on your investments, then these guys could be the option for you, could be being the optive word here. Um, and then finally, the cash flow statement. So um, strong cash flows. Uh, so the cash, uh, the, the net cash flow from their operating activities, um, uh, here it is, um, uh, is 785 million. Um, in terms of that 785 million, um, uh, you know, there's no sort of no really big numbers. Um, they're kind of uh, uh they they you know that their, their profit is seven um uh, eight seven. Uh, the cash is seven eight four. So very similar um uh, numbers coming through that. Um, in terms of their expenditure, really no investment going on because as we discussed, they don't really need to do any investment. So they don't need to buy you know stuff in order to do this business. Uh, they probably need to acquire more land. Um uh. uh uh, and, and then in terms of the financing, the big number in the financing is is the dividend. So effectively, they're generating the cash flow and they're using that cash flow uh, to pay the dividend. You know, that's effectively what this business is. So that's good for the shareholders. And they are sitting on sort of surplus cash and they've got one point two billion in the bank, which should help them to weather any future storms. So all in all, looking pretty healthy. Let's just jump down to the share price. Um, and the share price tells a slightly different story. We can see the share, um, the shares in this company are, you know, they've been, you know, recently uh, they have been uh, on a, on the slide. And, you know, the question is whether that now represents, uh, you know, value for money. Well, you know, very, very high dividend uh, at a very low P-E ratio. So the P-E ratio, if you remember, is the price to earnings. That's the price divided by the earnings. Uh, and if you turn it upside down and get the earnings over the price, you get the yield. And that tells me that they're on a yield of about 20 percent. So 20 percent sounds a really good yield. Um, it's close to the dividend yield because they're paying all that dividend, all that profit out as a dividend. Um, so this looks on the face of it like a very good market, um, a, a very good buy. Uh, and that was exactly um, uh, Manoj's uh, comment. He said, look, I think this is you know, got a strong balance sheet, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and I think you're probably right. Um, but, you know, just go back to those comments again. Um, here they are. So uh, we've got things like, you know, the current ratio 4.9. Very, very strong indeed. Debt to equity. Um, I mean, there is no debt uh, in, in these guys. They really haven't got any debt. So, you know, strong revenue growth. Um, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, and good cash flow. So all of it is ticking the boxes. The problem, Moeed, as far as I'm concerned, is that these guys are facing three very significant headwinds, okay? So first of all, uh, we are seeing a cost of living crisis where people are spending more and more on energy. They've just announced that that is uh, the energy price cap is only going to last through till April. Uh, and so people could be seeing something like, you know, £6,000 a year um, uh, in energy costs, et cetera, et cetera, and going further if that doesn't come under control. And the government is only going to help um, the, the least well off. So affordability, spare cash is going to come down. At the same time, we've got the interest rates which are going up. And if interest rates are going up, it's going to make houses even less affordable. And what I think is going to happen is that with a combination of interest rates going up, and we're talking about two year fixes uh, are now on north of 6%, um, which was unheard of uh, just a year ago. So if you're, uh, you know, if you're in a house and you're having to refinance your house, you've just exited your old mortgage, uh, your new fix is now on the horizon. If you're fixing at 6%, um, uh, if you 
your energy prices have gone up, you're going to have much less money to spend on these houses. So there's going to be downward pressure. Now, the other problem, and we haven't seen this in the UK for a long, long time. So the last kind of proper crisis, 2008, the government slashed interest rates from five to about, you know, well, basically to zero percent. OK, and that allowed people who were in houses who were struggling uh, to be able, you know, they saw their interest rates go down, their, their, their um, payments go down, their monthly payments, and that allowed them to survive. However, we're seeing the reverse. We're seeing mortgage costs going up. We're seeing energy costs going up. And that means that some people are not going to be able to afford their mortgages. And if they can't afford their mortgages, they're going to have to either downsize or sell their houses and rent. Either way. I think that we're going to see over the next year or so forced sellers into the market and forced sellers are the worst of all possible worlds because the word forced, they have to sell their um, they have to sell their property and that potentially will lead to falling house prices. Now, that's purely speculation and the government is going to do everything in its control in order to prevent that, because if your house prices are going down in value, you definitely won't invoke the incumbent uh, uh, political party back into power. However, we've seen the power of markets. You alluded to the guilt market, the power of markets and the markets are more powerful than the government. If you're if you're taking economics versus politics, I'll take economics any time. They will always ultimately win. So the government may try to prop up house prices with, but you know, they've been doing that for the last 20 years with buy to let and help to buy and all these kind of weird and wonderful schemes and reductions in stamp duty. But at the end of the day, if we have forced sellers and we have house prices going down, uh, that means that as house prices are going down, you have more forced sellers. People suddenly realize they've got to get out early rather than late. They're going to drop into negative equity. We end up with mortgage prisoners. So these guys have some really significant headwinds as a business. Now, I'm not saying they're not going to survive. Uh, and maybe you will look at that balance sheet and think they can hunker down. They can weather the storm. They can ride it out. And they should be OK. And, and, and maybe, you know, maybe that is an argument. I, you know, I can't see them kind of, you know, wobbling just yet. Um, but, you know, just be aware that this could be, you know, a long term value play. And I don't think that the value is going to come back for these guys anytime soon. OK, and that's and that's my kind of opinion. So the financials are looking pretty good. Um, I just think that the 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 economy, you know, the area that they are working in is going to be, uh, you know, challenging, to say the least, Moe. Yeah, uh, to totally fair. And, uh, you know, those are the things you have to be aware of and you've got to look into if you're going to in any way engage with a company like this or any other company for that matter. So whether you sell to this company, whether you think about investing in them, or if you're thinking about joining them uh, as an employee, you need to be aware of these circumstances. Um, so those are our opinions, right? Those are our thoughts. We'd love to hear yours. As uh, Ted mentioned, do please uh, share your comments in the comment section below. Like, share and subscribe. If you have a company that you're really interested in and you would like our analysis of their finances to help you with your own analysis, then do leave a note in the comment section and put some context as Manoj did so eloquently. So thank you. Thank you, Ted. Thank you, everyone else. And we'll see you on the next video. OK, good to see you, Moe. Catch you later. So I hope you enjoyed that video and found it useful and informative. Now, if you want to know more about uh, what I do, then you can visit Talk Financials and find out about the training workshops uh, and the clients uh, that I work with. And the QR code uh, is on your screen right now. If you are interested in being able to do this yourself, to do some uh, financial analysis, there's a couple of resources. There is an online workshop. Uh, it's available on my website or you can click on the QR code and it'll stay, take you straight through uh, to this online workshop uh, where you can learn to read and understand and interpret financial information yourself. Alternatively, there is a book available at all good bookstops, particularly a very big online one. And the QR code, once again, will take you through to the opportunity to buy the book. Uh, and there is also a Kindle edition. Um, Otherwise, that's everything from me. Please, please, please don't forget to like, share and subscribe uh, to the channel. More subscribers uh, uh, makes it uh, uh, means that you're going to get um, notification um, about uh, new videos coming up. 
uh, and also the opportunity to you know ask questions and do recommend any videos uh, or sorry any companies that you'd like me uh, to analyze for you um, I think we've got a couple of uh, suggested next videos coming up uh, so please do uh, take the opportunity have a look at the other videos uh, and don't forget to like share and subscribe to the channel and I will see you on the next video